The history of Warsash Maritime Academy is a history of change, of moving with the times and adapting to the challenges and developments within the maritime world. Even the Academy name and our waterfront location were a response to changing times. What we know as Warsash Maritime Academy today started as the Gilchrist Navigation School, founded in Bassett, Southampton in 1909. The school was brought into University College Southampton in 1932, moving to South Stoneham House in Swaveling in 1939 under the then director, Captain G.W. Wally Wakeford. He was so determined that discipline was the be all and the end all. When we were issued with um, old rifles, there were um, I don't know, from the Boer War or something, very, very old rifles. And from then on, of course, um, we started doing drill because if you've got a rifle, you've got to do something with it. Throughout the war, the school ran courses for officers of the UK and International Armed Forces. But when Poland uh, were in such a terrible state, he took uh, from, the, uh, from the ambassador Polish youngsters and trained them here at Warsaw to go back to sea. In 1946, the School of Navigation moved again to facilities at Warsaw, which included a former naval base, HMS Tormenta, and in those early years, the school retained a decidedly military feel. So we did a week, it's rather extraordinary really, at the gunnery school at Whale Island learning how to, how to man a pom-pom and Bofors guns and various things and we were really taken through drill seriously there in the naval drill sheds by these very fierce petty officers. Um, some of the leading cadets were taught how to use cutlasses. The daily routine started at six in the morning when Without fail, they were going for runs. And they had to run along the shore. Uh, it was about a, a mile or two. Then back, <coughs> out on the parade ground, showered and in uniform, parade ground and the marching routines with rifles were then carried out. When you lived through that period, you just took it for granted. That's just how it was. It was better than, than during the war, I can assure you. While many of the military trappings of life at Warsash have fallen away over the years, discipline remains a fundamental part of what makes a Warsash cadet. And it's a fundamental part of why they stand out. You had to be able to handle ships in all situations. You had to be able to, and the Warsash lads could always do it. As well as that discipline and the technical knowledge to back it up, Warsash cadets developed confidence, teamwork, and leadership skills through practical experience at sea. The house in was a <coughs> catch, a wooden catch. She would take 16 youngsters, two watches of eight, port watch, starboard watch. And when they arrived, they knew nothing. Um, and when they left, they had been terrified, uh, overjoyed, and quite amazed in fair portions. First night we were anchored off Isle of Wight, uh, <clears throat> trying to keep anchor watches at night and then having to get the gig out to get <laughs> Commander McKillop and the boatswain back on board when they went ashore that night. <laughs> we had uh, uh, whalers which we were made to row. Um, and um, I can remember uh, rowing out into the Southampton water um, and thinking that uh, Forley would never ever get any nearer um, and then uh, we turned round and would come back and the handball or Warsash would never get any closer either. The boats and it were for us to use at weekends as well so you could, you, you had to sign it out but you could take, your motor, take one of the motorboats, go down the river go and have lunch at the, you know, the Tolly Sailor or something and come back. And it was encouraged because it was all more practice on the boat and more seamanship. Now the Maritime Academy is evolving again, moving much of its teaching back into the city. 
While our shore-based facilities remain at Warsash, accommodation and classroom teaching have moved to dedicated facilities in the centre of town. Here, the newly refitted Austin building on St Mary's campus will offer a new home for our officer cadets. One with modern, dedicated spaces for teaching, engineering and technical training. This return to Southampton allows the Academy to develop and invest in its facilities in ways the old site never could, ensuring it continues to meet the changing needs of the modern maritime industry. There's a lot of things that you have to do when you come ashore that you don't experience at sea and I think helping people to make that bridge is, is one of the things that places like Walsh can help with. Along with cutting-edge simulators and engineering facilities, we're bringing the Academy's heritage right along with us. The discipline, the values and the unique mix of academic and practical skills which have made Warsash one of the world's leading maritime training providers. Warsash's heritage is one of its strengths and around the world the maritime industry recognises it. The move uh, is going to offer cadets and trainees the best of both worlds, retaining the heritage yet enhancing the support the university can offer and giving them access to the latest technology and facilities in St Mary's campus. And the St Mary's neighbourhood has maritime links of its own. Less than 100 yards from the Academy's new Austin building, St Mary's Church, which gives the neighbourhood its name, has always been closely connected with Southampton docks. In a dedicated Siemens chapel, the walls are hung with the house flags of the major shipping companies operating in Southampton while a beautiful stained glass window shows the flags and funnels of various shipping companies from Southampton past and present. The window and the chapel are a fantastic reminder that this latest phase of the Academy's existence is not a step away from its heritage, it's a reconnection with Southampton's maritime past. In September 2017, St Mary's will welcome the next generation of seafarers, just as the city and the Academy have always done.